All right. So today we, I'm going to show you how to paint this little love door or not door hanger, <laughs> a sign. It could be a door hanger, but it's just a little sign. Um, and I got this wood shape at Dollar Tree, uh, $1.25, because Dollar Tree is no longer a dollar. It's dollar twenty-five now. Um, so I also have a free template that, and I put it in the notes, uh, you can download the template. It fits this exact size of part. Um, if you wanted to paint this on your own, um, or paint it while you're watching this, whatever you want to do. Hey, Diane. Hey, Carrie. Um, so if you want to just kind of make this for your house, you could, if you didn't want to do the leopard print, you could just do pink, red, whatever color you want. Um, so get that free template, uh, because yeah, it's free. Why not? You know, whole entire project for $1.25. Oh, plus paint, you know. Um, so I'm going to show you how to create this with the template. Um, when you download the template, it is going to print out in multiple sheets. So you're going to have you know, I couldn't get it to just do one sheet. So it is what it is. Um, so you're gonna, it's gonna pretty much look like this. So I usually will just cut this out. You don't have to cut it out, but it makes it easier when you go to put it on your sign as a template. I usually use a little exacto knife, but I don't have it out. So scissors it is. Anyway, I've been getting a lot of questions on how do you paint leopard print lately? Like a lot. So I just thought I would do kind of a quick, easy way. There's a lot of different ways to do it, but this is kind of like a super easy way. And I thought it would be fun with the Dollar Tree uh cut out so fun and something easy people could go get and inexpensive so that's how this whole situation came about okay so what i do is just get some tape out and i'm going to tape this together now when it prints out it does print out this like border right here which is super annoying um but you just kind of eyeball it, just try to kind of line it up the best you can. And then just tape it together. You know, if you want to leave this part, this part off you can, uh, but I'm just going to tape it all together. You could also use these if you wanted to cut your own signs out. Um, you could put this on your board and just trace the heart out and then just cut it out with your jigsaw if you wanted to do that. Um, I did that for years and years and I'm so happy that I don't have to do that anymore. But sometimes I like to be able to do it so that I don't have to depend on other people like my husband who's fabulous. But, you know, I just, you know, I don't like I'm kind of an impatient person. Like I want everything right now. I don't want to wait on anybody. Um, hey, Alicia. Hey, Chrissy. Uh, thanks for joining us. So this will be your free template. You'll get it. You'll tape it together. It's going to look like this. Okay. And you could even use this if you wanted to on a bigger sign, if you just wanted the lettering uh, portion of this. And if you want to, you could just Kind of get a general idea of where to put these little leopard print squiggly things. I call them cheese puffs. So don't they look like cheese puffs? Like Cheetos cheese puffs? That's what they remind me of. Um, so if you wanted to do that, you could do that instead of, um, you know, tracing it all. But I am going to first take this part and I'm just going to untie this string here 
because I'm going to base coat this with a light pink. This side's a little rough, so I will use this side, which it's got these spots on here. So that might be hard to cover, but whatever. Um, I'm just using a super pale pink. This is folk art. Where's the camera? Seashell pink. I just chose just a super light color. You can use whatever you want. These are kind of more of a like blush or kind of a corally pink that's popular right now. Um, so I'm just going to base coat the sign. Now I like to base coat my signs with these little sponge dot sponge brush things. Um, yes, Diane. Um, this is the only heart size that they have at Dollar Tree. I think that's it. Um, so I like to base coat my signs with these. They work, it works really well and it's kind of fast, depending on what I'm doing. But if it's kind of a surface area like this size, um, I can just kind of run this across the sign here. I like it because um, it, it puts a really smooth layer on your sign. So you don't have a lot of um, thick brush strokes, which, you know, um, when you're starting out painting, you tend to kind of get heavy on the paint. And so I like this because it kind of puts a really thin coat of paint on your sign, keeps it really smooth and even. And it's also really good for your sides. So I just take it like this. Run it across my signs here. And if you guys have any questions as we go, I'll try to check the chat and um, answer any questions you might have. So sometimes the sponge brush leaves like little paint or foam, whatever. It might be the paint though. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a second coat of paint on. Another good thing about this is it does put a really thin coat of paint, so it will dry really fast. Um, you gotta really be careful putting a thick coat of paint on your sign because sometimes it um, will take a long time to dry. So I'm gonna turn my little space heater off. I get hot and then I get cold and then I get hot. Um, yes, uh, let's see, has one. <laughs> Thank you, Regina. Um, yeah, I, um, oh, Diane said her hearts that she got uh, were a little bit bigger at Dollar Tree. Oh, I didn't know that. Dollar, I don't know. Maybe they, I got these like a month ago, so maybe they have new stuff. I don't know. Um, so yeah, Regina, I, um, I accidentally discovered this. Um, I was like using it to do like polka dots one day and, uh, I just had some extra paint and then I had some like mini signs that needed the same color. So I was like, well, I'll just, you know, use, you know how it goes. I'll just use up the rest of this. And I was like, wow. <laughs> It really works good. So ever since I've been completely hooked to using those and I love them. Um, they're really so much faster. So anyway, so I'm just gonna put one more coat on these. I like to just probably coat my signs a little more, but um, there's these like little spots on here and I just wanna get it covered up, so. Yes, all these little, I think it's probably, it's probably the paint and not the brush. But if you ever get like these little like kind of blobs of paint, uh, you can just kind of roll them off with your finger here. Sometimes the paints as I sit, like I know I've had that pink for a really long time. So as I sit, they just kind of get old. Or sometimes you get a brand new bottle of paint and it's like that. But usually if you wait until this dries, it will, you can just kind of roll it off or just take a light little sander and sand it off. 
Um, okay, so I'm gonna let this dry just real quick. The second color that I'm gonna use for my little cheese puffs here are is um, Cactus Flower by Deco Art. Where, where are we? I typically use Deco Art colors, um, but I didn't have a super light Deco Art pink for this. So we'll guard it in. Anyway, I'm gonna put some just kind of on the plate here. Now, let me just dry this really quick with this hair dryer so that y'all don't have to just sit and watch paint dry. You know, if I was doing this at home for myself, I probably would coat it like two more times because I'm a weirdo because I don't like that showing. But, uh, you know, for sake of Facebook Live, I'm not going to do that. So let's see. Hey, Katie. Hey, Julie. Hey, Londi. Hey, Sandy. Uh, welcome. We are just kind of uh, getting started painting this uh, little leopard print heart here. Um, okay, so you have your template here. You can either just, if you're a little more experienced or crafty, you can probably just eyeball where these little cheese puffs go. Um, but otherwise you could um, just kind of put your, Put this over the heart and I just kind of line it up the best I can, maybe making paying more attention to where that part is and where the point of this heart is. Um, and then I get these little clamps. These came from Dollar Tree too. Um, you could get this or like a binder clip or sometimes I use like these, um, whatever you have. You don't have to use this, but it will make your life easier. So I'm just going to clamp it there just so that it doesn't move or shift around. And then I have this graphite paper and all of this is linked, the supplies are linked in my Amazon storefront. So if you go to canvassigndesigns.com forward slash connect, you'll see um, Amazon favorites on there and you can kind of see where all the supplies is linked or are linked. Um, but anyway, this is graphite paper. You're gonna have a shiny side here and a dull side. You're gonna wanna put it face down and you're gonna wanna really be careful because this is a light pink sign and this is dark graphite paper. So don't like rub your hand on it or anything because it will leave smudges, which you can't erase, but it's just more work. I wouldn't do it. Um, okay, so if you, I'm just gonna kind of trace these little squiggly marks, lines, cheese puffs. Um, let me zoom in here. And why won't you let me zoom in? There's always some like notification on my phone that prevents me from doing this. Okay. Just gonna zoom in so you can kind of get a little bit closer of a look as to what I'm doing. Okay. So I'm not gonna sit and trace out each of these. You can, if you want, if you like need to know how wide to get them. But you like, there's really just, this is kind of just do your own thing. It doesn't have to be exactly like this. If you make them a little fatter or a little skinnier, it's, you know, it's up to you on how you want to do it. But I'm just gonna take this pencil and I'm gonna press very lightly because I don't wanna leave dark. Um, marks because then it might be hard to cover up with the paint. But I'm just going to kind of go in the middle just so I can kind of generally know where I have these positioned. Typically, I just kind of I just kind of pick a spot and start um, when I'm doing these, and I just kind of try to rotate these shapes, like you know um, these that look like this rotated with. One that's like the letter C rotated with these that look like little smiley faces. And I just kind of try to trade them out. <laughs> but I'm 
with this, I'm gonna just show you. And I am going to be releasing a tutorial on three other ways to do leopard print because there's a lot of a lot of ways you can do leopard print. And um, again, like I said, I've had so many people asking me lately that I just thought I would do a video tutorial on it. And I actually did a video tutorial. <laughs> I recorded a video tutorial uh, last week. And um, when I went back to edit it, it only, it only recorded my face doing it. So that was just a big fat waste of time. Um, so you got my, my face telling you what to do, but you couldn't see my hands. So I have to redo it. But as soon as I get that up, I will be posting that um, for anybody that wants to know. So before, typically before I unclip it, I just lift this up and just make sure that everything um, traced like it was supposed to. So we're not gonna do the words yet because we're gonna do the, the or the word, we're gonna do the word on top of the little cheese puffs, okay? Let's see here. Oh yeah, Diane said she's using a clothes pin to clip hers on. You can use that too. Whatever you can get to just clip it. Um, these were at the Dollar Tree and there were six of them. So I just grabbed them. But before I did that, I used binder clips. So just whatever you have to keep it kind of in place, then it doesn't like scratch the sign. Sometimes it will like scratch the sign, but anyway. Um, okay, so. Now I have my cactus flower. Where are you, camera? Right here, deco art, cactus flower. Again, you can use whatever paints that you want, that you like, doesn't matter. And so for this part, I usually use like either a round brush or today I'm gonna use, this is called a filbert brush. And it's just kind of, it's kind of like a flat brush, but this piece right here is just kind of rounded. Um, and that's usually what I use. So you could use that or um, like a round kind of type brush or, or like that's just, just round. You could use that too. Look how good my nails match the sign. Um, either one of those would work fine. So I'm just gonna take my paint here. Let's get over so you can kind of see what I'm doing. And I'm just going to just start, um, I'm like, is that a whole circle here? Or um, I'm just gonna start like taking this and kind of going over these lines. Now you want to, um, you know, they don't have to be perfectly straight. They can just be kind of like messy. So really anything goes with this. You can kind of do this like if you want. It's just kind of a placement idea. And you can kind of, you can see the pencil lines through this. So if you can, I would eyeball it just because you don't have to go over these twice. Once will be enough. And you wanna kind of be careful where you are going to be doing your lettering. So sometimes this can kind of get kind of heavy, you know, thick paint brush marks. I don't know if they know it, um, when you're doing this. So you wanna make sure to kind of be mindful of that where you're gonna do your lettering because you're gonna do your lettering on top of it and it's like kind of really thick paint in some spots. Um, just think about it, you're going to be lettering and then you're going to hit a little, you know, bump in the road. So it's just going to kind of make it a little harder. So the smoother you can make it, the better the lettering is going to be for you. So just a little, little helpful tip there. Um, let's see. Now that I did this, I'm like, some of these I can't tell. Are they half circles? Or are they just lines? I can't read my sketching here. Let's see, how are you? I feel like the way that I'm doing this is, oh, you know what? I'm looking at my example here. 
and I just freehanded this. I did not like trace it with this. So I'm like, how come these are shapes are different than the shapes of the one that I have here? And I couldn't figure, I was like, how'd I get that off? But that's how. Um, okay, so I need to be looking at this right here. Sorry, just a little moment there. I was like, why are those a completely different um, shape? So you just kind of go through here. I don't even know what I'm doing here. I'm not used to following a template. And when I do the leopard print tutorial, the three different ways to do leopard print, I kind of go into a little bit more detail, like if you're going to freehand this, like how I would figure out my placement and stuff like that. So um, just, you know, there's that piece of information. Because it's really like, it's this is really easy to do to freehand. Um, I know it might seem like, oh, I can't do it, but you can. It's like, it's easy. Like you don't have to follow any sort of a pattern or anything you just kind of just randomly put these where you, wherever it is that you want them I think the first time I did leopard print like I had to I didn't do this kind of leopard print I did the kind with the color in the center and I read like after I got done, I like, I didn't make them big enough. And so I had to like go back and like make them even bigger. So, you know, it might take a time or so before you kind of get the hang of it. But once you kind of figure out a, like a little a method, you'll be good. And you could do these with any, like I said, any color combo would work and look good. So I'm just going to kind of go back through on some of these areas where I can see my pencil line. Another good thing of, about freehanding it is that you don't have pencil lines. And you could also use this time to kind of smooth out any thick areas where the paint is just a little thick. Oh, I'm getting sleepy. It's like all quiet and I'm painting. It's the middle of the day. I'm going to be doing some more of these live like little tutorials with just signs that you can buy at um, Hobby Lobby, Walmart, Dollar Tree, places like that, just because I, I think it's easier. Like I can offer the wood cutout, um, but I think it's easier for you guys just to be able to go like to Walmart or Hobby Lobby and buy the sign when you can instead of having to order it online and pay for shipping and all that kind of good stuff. So I probably will be on the lookout for some cute designs that I could make that you guys could um, paint and then do some more of these live tutorials just cause they're, you know, they're fun. And it's a good way to, for me to be able to connect with you guys just on a different, uh, on a different level, not posts or Instagram stories. Facebook stories, what have you. Okay, so I'm just kind of keep going back over all this. Hey, Peggy, you're welcome for the pattern. Hey, Heidi, hey, Janice, hey, Mickey, or hey, Gigi. <laughs> um, let's see, my husband's grandmother's watching. 
Uh, hey, Angie, how are you? Um, okay, so, and how are y'all on, you know, the Saturday? Like I always just figure Saturday in the middle of the afternoon was kind of a good time to do this, you know? Um, I never know, like sometimes it's easier in the evenings when everything's slow and sometimes it's easier on the weekends. I think it just depends on the time of year. Um, but, okay. I'll just sit here and do this all day long. So I'm gonna stop, but we'll just pretend like, if you can see any of my pencil lines, just pretend like can't. You guys can cover up yours as much as you want. I tend to be like, overly perfectionist, you know, I'll just coat something like a thousand times. And I'm like, okay. It's so funny. Like my 16 year old one time, she was like, think about it, mom. That's like you, like one time I had to do this, like this Etsy customer requested some sign with all neon colors. And so I went and bought the neon paint. Well, neon paint is just don't ever paint sign with neon colors. Uh, let me know if you've ever done that. Um, it uh, requires a whole lot of coats of paint, okay? It does not cover well. Um, and so I had to paint this sign and it was like Chevron, like three different colors of pink Chevron and, um, not pink Chevron, <laughs> three different colors of neon Chevron. And um, so I had to like, I had to coat the sign like seven times, like, you know, blue, green, pink, orange, blue, green, pink, orange, blue, green, pink, orange, and do that seven times. And my daughter was like, mom, it's basically like you just painted seven signs and you only painted one. And I was like, mm, thanks for that. And yeah, that I never thought of it that way. And that um, you're right. And so now every time I have to like coat a sign a bunch of times, I think about that. Oh, I just basically painted four signs. Anyway, side story. I don't really know why y'all need that information, but Diane said she liked this time. Yeah, I think it all just depends on what people have going on. So, um, by the way, if you're on my email list, um, keep an eye out tomorrow is National Handwriting Day. Tomorrow or Monday. I think it's tomorrow. Um, and you'll be getting a, an email with several like lettering worksheets free like download practice um so that's that's fun keep an eye out for that okay so now this is gonna have to dry before i can do my lettering so if anybody has any questions ask me questions now because that will give me something to do while i'm waiting for this to dry I'm just smoothing out any of these like little areas. Or maybe y'all can give me like ideas of what signs that you'd like me to do a free tutorial on. If anybody has any brilliant ideas. Because, you know, decision making is not my strong suit. I, I, I don't like making decisions. So there's that about me that you didn't know. Well, some of you probably know that. Okay. Any questions, any questions, any questions? No questions? Okay. All right. Well, I'm gonna dry this with the hair dryer really fast. I smudged that paint. And then we'll do the lettering. The lettering's next. The fun parts.
Okay. All right. So here we have our cheese puffs ready to go. Now it's time for the lettering. So we're basically going to do the same thing. We're going to take the same template and we're going to line it back up on our sign. Be careful that you're not like clipping it on maybe a piece that's still not all the way dry. So just make sure it's all the way dry before you do this step. And then you're going to take your graphite paper again, shiny side down, gently place it on here. Do not rub it or rub your hand on it. Okay. So now we have our word. Two ways you could do this. You could either just kind of color in if you wanted to where this uh, lettering is, or you could outline it. If you outline it, just make sure that you outline to the inside of it, because when you get ready to go over it with your marker, um, a lot of times you're trying to smooth out lines and it's gonna get a little bit thicker than your pencil lines. And so if you kind of, if you trace it on the outside of that line, your word is gonna be a little bit thicker. Some words, it's not gonna matter, uh, but some words that could make, you know, a little bit of a difference on the look of it. Cause when it's like too like fat and big, like it just might take away the, from the feel of the way the letter or the words are supposed to look. So just again, depends on what you're lettering, but I always just run a line to the inside of it because I know, you know, the way it's supposed to be, but I will just kind of trace on the inside here just to kind of show you guys. And then here, I'm just gonna trace in the middle since that's a really narrow portion of the letter and here. And then also, you know, another good thing with these templates is you could, you know, put it on a regular sheet of paper if you wanted to, or just put it down on the table and just kind of practice like going over the word with your hand. Um, lettering is a whole lot of muscle memory. And um, the more you kind of do it, the more your hand is going to get familiar with those movements. Um, because lettering is not handwriting, it's different. It's not like you're sitting down to write something in cursive. I do not, you know, write a sentence in cursive like this, like this, you know, like super slow and careful. Um, so, and some of the shapes are a little bit different than the way you might shape it if you were just lettering or writing on paper, like with your handwriting. So, um, you know, just to get that muscle memory and that movement and become have your hand become familiar with it and you know have your mind and your hand kind of working together. Um, just setting this on a table and just practice just lettering it or sometimes if I'm having trouble with a particular letter when I'm lettering and I um, just can't quite make it look the way that I want it to look. I'll just get a sheet of paper and I will just do that letter over and over and over and over and over and over and over. Then you'll do one, you'll be like, oh, that one looked really good. Okay, how did I do that? Let me try to do that again. So that, believe it or not, works really good. It's like when you're in school writing sentences. <laughs> you remember that information if you had to write that sentence a whole bunch of times. Old school, back in the day, they don't do that anymore. But um, anyway. So that's just a little tip there. Um, and I always, again, check this, make sure that it transferred. I wrote really light, so my transfer is not super dark, but um, you guys could see if I can get it darker. I didn't press down really hard, but that way you guys can see what I'm doing whenever I letter this. Okay, there, that's a little bit darker. So you guys can kind of see what I'm doing. Now, I just want to show you this. 
where my graphite paper was. See how it kind of, sometimes it'll kind of rub on your sign there. And you can just take an eraser when you're done and just, it, it should erase. Sometimes it, you have to work at it a little bit, but it should erase. And if it doesn't, just go back over it with some, some paint. Just kind of a job hazard, you know. Just one of those things. Okay. So now we have our word. <clears throat> I have my favorite black marker, or you could use a paint pen if you wanted to. Um, there are several different kinds of paint pens, but you use whatever you want. And I am going to use this. If I can get this a little bit closer, there you guys. And I, I do have a sign lettering course coming out on Tuesday, where I'm really going in, really take a deep dive into all this and all the specifics of all this. But um, this is my favorite black marker that I use all the time. Um, I use black paint pens sometimes too, but this one, just depending on what you're doing for this sign, I'm gonna use this black one. Okay, so you can see how I have my word traced here. I'm just gonna go over this and, and trace it. Now, be careful not to rub your hand on this part of the lettering. Um, you could, if you didn't want to do that, maybe you just do this. It still could rub this, but sometimes like if you have lotion on or something, the oils in your hands sometimes might, um, you know, leave more of a smudge mark on your paper or your sign. But so I kind of have experience. I know where to, I usually will put my pinky down here, just kind of grace myself. Um, but I'm just going to start. And I don't start necessarily like where you would think you should start, like, you know, I'm, when you're writing the words, I just kind of segment it down and kind of take the curves um, the way that I know my hand does better. I do better when I'm dragging down when I'm writing a letter versus pushing up. So sometimes I might do it like this and then I might take it and turn it. So you'll kind of see me do that. And that's why I'm doing that. Um, but anyway, so I'm just starting here with these curves. And again, just be careful, you know, where you painted that leopard print, it might be a little bit bumpy underneath. Um, if, you, if you run your pen across and it gets bumpy, when you go back over it, I don't know how easy this is gonna be for people starting out, but um, I try to like, I, I know where that bump was because you can see your line is crooked. Um, just kind of pick up a little bit on your pen, um, ease up on the pressure. That way it's not, uh, you know, it's, you're, it's just gonna be go over that little bump area just a little lighter. So if you can kind of connect those dots, that will help um, smooth out that line. But just kind of take it slow. Uh, get these lines as straight as you can. Again, a lot of it's just practice. The more you do it, the better you will get at it. This pen is also linked in my Amazon store in the link. Um, canvas sign canvas sign designs.com forward slash connect and there will show you a little amazon link and this is linked in that if you wanted to see what pen it was okay so now we're moving on to this so if you could just try to think of your letters more as shapes than letters sometimes that helps like 
retrain your mind on how to um, draw them because it's basically what you're doing. You, you're just drawing shapes. So you see how I went down on this side of the O, I went down because I knew I would get a straighter line than pushing up. Um, if you are left-handed, this is going to be the same for you, just on opposite um, letters, on different letters, you're going to have the same situation. Um, some letters you're going to be pushing up and some letters you're going to be pulling down. So it, it'll just be opposite of the right-handed people. So again, I just kind of segment these letters and do the angles and the shapes that I know are easy. And sometimes I flip it around all different ways. When you are lettering on a sign like this, like I said, it there, it does make it a little bit harder because there are going to be some little bumpy areas. But just the best you can with it. And I totally didn't, didn't even have my reading glasses on. I haven't lettered something <laughs> on a sign. I don't even know how long without those. I'm getting old. Never wore glasses a day in my life, but now I have to wear reading glasses uh, to read my phone and to, you know, do lettering. Okay, so I'm just gonna make this just a little bit wider. You can kind of just play around with the angles and just kind of, you know, work at them. Just be careful when you're doing like O's or areas like here. because It's really easy to get, go down a little rabbit hole and keep trying to fix it and keep trying to fix it. And before you know it, like it's way bigger than what you uh, were trying to, way bigger than what it was needed to be. Whatever, however you say that. All right, so there we have it. Some people I've also seen letter with a Sharpie, um, which those will work too. I particularly do not like the color of black Sharpie because it's kind of like a purplish color. And so it's not real like dark. The opacity is not great on it. So I don't use them, but you could for practicing purposes. Okay, so there's my left. There you have it. So I'm going to just zoom out just a little bit because now I'm gonna add, look how different, my pinks are a little different. I must have used other colors, or maybe once you spray it, sometimes when you spray it or seal it, it kind of turns a little bit different of a color. Hmm. Um, I think that's what it is, but anyway, uh, I'm going to do these little accents now. Um, those aren't on your template, so if you just want to watch this part, you don't have to do those. If you want it just like this, I don't know. I always add add some accents here, but we have our squiggly line there. So I'm gonna do that first. And then the other one here. And then, then I'm going to, you could either do this with a paintbrush or with your marker. I did it with a paintbrush last time, but 
I'm going to do it with this marker because it's probably easier for a lot of people. I'm just going to kind of trace this. just like that. And now I'm going to accent this and I need to get some white paint. One moment. Any white paint will do. This is deco art, snow white. What, where are we? But any white paint is good for this part. And you know, I can just use the lid of this. Okay, so I, for this part, accenting, um, I just use a, just kind of a small accenting detail, like, but not too small. Um, the more you do this, you kind of figure out which brush is going to give you the look that you want. So I already know that, but you, if you wanted to you kind of practice, you could even take this template and practice on your template if you wanted to. Anyway, um, so I'm just going to kind of go over these lines just a little bit, just kind of tone it down. We'll do this too. Now, I like to make my accents not like the same consistency or thickness all the way through. So you can kind of see how some parts are lighter and parts are darker. Um, I like to do that just so that I don't have to worry about keeping them all symmetrically even. Um, so that's just, that's my out on, <laughs> on keeping things like that. But um, some people also just accent with uh, a white paint pen. Like you could get a white paint pen if you wanted to and just run through there. I like the look of the brush in my letters. I like to use like a paint pen's good for the outline stuff. But for the inside of the letters accenting, I like to use a brush. So I just dip it in my paint, but I kind of get all this excess off because I don't want the paint to be really dark. Um, and then I just, not very much pressure, just kind of very lightly do that. And again, don't keep a lot of paint on your brush because then it's going to be really dark. And if I get like one spot, it's like really dark, like this is a lot darker than, you know, this, I, sometimes I might just kind of go back over it in certain areas just so that it all matches. Again, um, I do have a sign lettering course that is coming out on Tuesday. It's a self-paced course. So um, basically it's just a lot of pre-recorded tutorials step-by-step step breaking down everything. And it's way more detailed um, what I use, how I use it, how I move my arm, just all kinds of stuff. So um, if the lettering is something that you are interested in learning or getting better at, um, it's a good course. It's, it's got everything from making templates to accenting, to shadowing your letters, um, to, lettering with the paintbrush, lettering with paint pens, what paint pens I use, um, how I use them, all kinds of things. Um, so it's a good uh, course to take if you're wanting to get better at lettering on signs or even if you want to start lettering on signs. Um, I know there's a lot of painters that would love to do the lettering, um, but it's their Kind of intimidated by it and I totally get that. <clears throat> it took me a lot of years to perfect it to where it is now and I would have given anything to have been able to just take a course when I started painting and have somebody just tell me uh, what worked because I can't even say how much money that I spent on lettering supplies and let me try this marker, let me try this marker, maybe this will work and um just countless amounts of money um, just trying to find something that worked. So <clears throat> if 
if any of that sounds familiar, it would be a good course to take. Um, it will help with hand lettering. We go, kind of go over hand lettering and then get into hand lettering on wood signs. So it could be like signs like this or signs with like um, sayings on them that are like just plain color, um, however. But anyway, that comes out on Tuesday. So just make sure that you get on, there's an email wait list and that just means that um, you'll get an email announcement when it's released because there's gonna be some special bonuses for people who by the course like in the first 24 hours. So you won't want to forget. <clears throat> Anyhow, um, so does anybody have any questions? Again, I put a link to this free template in the notes on the live. <laughs> what words am I trying to think of? Um, I put a link to get this template. You'll just, um, they'll, it, you'll have get it emailed to you. You tape it together, then you have it forever. And like I said, you, <clears throat> you could use this and just not even do the cheetah print and just use it for the word love. Cause you could put this on all kinds of cute little signs. Um, so get that before that link is taken down. Like I'll leave it up for some time, but um, at some point it's going to be taken down and you won't be able to find it. So make sure you get that. Uh, make sure you also are on my email list if you are interested in getting the lettering sheets, free lettering sheets, which will be emailed out tomorrow. I will also be emailing out a recap of this Facebook Live. So it's being recorded so that you can download it if you want and watch it whenever. Um, and if you want to watch it again, go buy some of these and go watch it again. You can do that. And then Tuesday sign lettering course comes out and I have another Facebook live coming on February 1st, I think. And then another one coming a couple weeks later. So there's lots of good stuff. I'm trying to plan this year and be like, kind of think ahead so that I can do more projects like this. Um, for you guys and give you guys some, you know, some little freebies and things like that. I'm usually like running so far behind that I'm like thinking of these ideas like a week before I need to do it and it's just too much. So I'm really concentrating this year on trying to get ahead of the game and uh, so that I can, you know, serve you guys more. So anyway, um, Diane said, thank you. She's doing three hearts. So she'll be watching this again. Fabulous. Um, you, and you can find it on Facebook too, if you want to just come back and watch it, but I will be emailing everybody the link. Um, I'll probably download it to YouTube or something like that. So you guys can watch it then. And I'm going to go ahead and stop this recording.